Iogo actual service. This is the third and final part of my old footage video about how I made my Runa cloak. In this video I'll be showing you how to hem the slit using a linen fabric border that goes all the way around the edge, like this. I've hemmed every edge except for the slit, so that's one side of the slit. And, and now the problem I have is going to be this. So I've been thinking about what to do about that for a little while and there are two ways that this problem seems to be solved. You either don't hem it at all, which is fine if your fabric doesn't fray. If you don't hem it at all you might want to cut it into a little bit of a circle. So where's the chalk gone? If you're using a boiled wool and you're just relying on the fact that boiled wool doesn't fray, it probably will tear so I'm gonna just draw on here what I would recommend that you do. If you imagine it like a giant keyhole. I don't know if you can see that but that's what I would recommend that you cut it like if you're using boiled wool and you're just relying on it not fraying because that will spread out the load on the point and it will stop it from tearing. But I'm not going to do that. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do a border. So if you take a look at this tunic here, that's what I want mine to look like so that it's hemmed. So I've got some linen to do that with and I'll show you how to do that. Now it won't be quite as neat or as insanely geometric as this one because this one took me a ridiculous amount of time and to be honest I don't want to repeat that. But what I will be doing is I'll be making the border smaller on the inside than it is on the outside and that has a reason which I'll tell you about in a minute. Now the first thing to do is I'm going to make a border using this linen which is just quite a coarse upholstery linen which I bought to make a pair of trousers out of a few years ago. Because of the fact that you have to hem the border on the inside when it wraps around the end, you either make the border in two separate pieces and leave the slit ending at just the point, or you cut the slit open a bit at the end. Now that's exactly the same on this tunic. So this tunic's got a step on it of about half an inch. So I think I'm going to do that exactly the same on the cloak because I know it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nick that about a quarter inch that way and you won't be able to see this sorry but I'm doing exactly the same on the other side. So it's been it's been nicked about a quarter inch on both sides. Yep that's one th good thing about the herringbone weave is that you can actually see straight lines in it which makes it very easy to get stuff parallel. And I know that each individual step on the weave is half an inch on this fabric so that means I can just cut it halfway but you might have to measure if you didn't have herringbone fabric. And then I'm going to cut an elongated triangle. It's about two inches from where that triangle starts to the middle but it doesn't really matter. Up to that point. Now if I was keeping everything exactly parallel I would cut it all the way to the end but that will actually make my cloak smaller and honestly it's a waste of fabric because there's no point because that will just pull straight inside the border and you won't be able to tell. There are my two pieces of fabric. One of those is going to become the front and the smaller one is going to become the back. It's been pre-washed and not ironed that's why it's screwed up. I've already marked on there my front border is going to be two inches big so from there to there is two inches and from there to there is two inches and I've left three quarters for seam allowance in the middle. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to mark that at the other end two inches at both ends and then I'm going to just draw it on. This will hopefully all make sense when you've seen it completed. I know it will make virtually no sense at all at the moment. So that would be the outside of my border. And then if I'm doing it two inches for the thickness then I'll come down two inches from the top. That would be there. 
So it's only rough, but you won't be able to tell when it's on the finished thing. So that is going to be my, where my split is. And that's going to be the inside. And then that's going to be the outside. So obviously, because this would fray, you have to be able to fold it over. So that's why you need room on the inside, which is why you need that half inch. I'm going to mark out nearly the same on this one. So my split there is six inches. So I'm going to do six inches from there to the middle. Trust me, it gets a bit weirder and more incomprehensible before it starts to make sense. But it will start to make sense, I really hope so. This is the inside, that's the outside. So the only bits between those two things that need to be the same is that middle bit, which needs to be six inch by half an inch. If you're going to make your border bigger, then just use a different dimension for the outside. Then I'm going to mark one inch above it for the border on inside. Now, because these were both cut to the same length, that one's got a smaller border, so it doesn't need to be as long. So I'll just trim that. And now what I'll do is I'll pin them together back to back. The best way to do this is to put the pins in the corners of the fabric, in, in the corners of the lines, so that you can be sure that it's actually matched up. Start with that one. And then because they're pretty much the same length, all you then have to do is line it up straight and then make sure the lines match on the other side. So it's actually quite straightforward. So now, because the fabric's flat and the lines are straight and it's matched up there and there and it's matched up at that end, then that should be absolutely fine. What I'm going to go away and do now is I'm going to do a run of sewing machine stitch, which will start there and it will go round the outside of that yellow line in the U shape there and then go back to the end. And that's all I'm going to do and then I'll come back to the camera. I know it's black thread and I know it doesn't match but that doesn't actually matter because that will end up being on the inside. So before I do anything else I will just say that that little end bit at the end of the U, I've actually gone over that three times with the sewing machine and that's because that's going to be taking the most force out of the entire cloak because that's right at the end of the slit. So that does actually need to be quite strong and not come undone. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully cut this apart straight down the middle in between those two threads and I'm hoping it will start to make some kind of sense in a minute. So I just cut that straight down to the end but I have gone to... but I've not quite gone right to the end, I've left about an eighth of an inch there and then at the end I'm just going to put a tiny nick in it within an eighth of an inch of the end, not right to the where the sewing is, like that, just a little bit away because otherwise it will come undone because it will fray towards that point, but it needs to be able to turn inside out. You get your strange shaped piece of fabric and you flip it right over so that those two are meet, met up with each other, so it's kind of like a bit of origami. But when you turn that inside out, like that, and you stretch your seams out and you fold it back over and press it down, this is the clever bit, if I can call it that. Hope it works. Now this is why you wanted to cut it as close as you can possibly get away with to that seam because in order to pull it so that it ends up looking flat you've basically got to stretch that extra tail of fabric that's on the inside. There you go. Now we've got a perfect cloak slit shaped piece of linen which I can sew over the end of the cloak slit where I've cut that little half inch flat and it will stop it from fraying. Now the thing that's worth mentioning 
if you want it to be completely seamless and just look flat right to the front of your cloak then obviously you're going to want to make this piece as long as the cloak slit is but I didn't have enough leftover linen to do that so what I'm basically going to do is at that point I'll just seam it I'll fold a piece of linen which is just a big long strip which is an off cut of another piece of the cloak over the end and then I'll just have a seam but if you don't want to have a seam that's how you go about not having a seam now it's very important to get this right because if I end up sewing that on backwards then I'll have it on the wrong side and the back the back of the hems will be the front of the um, thing so that's the front of the cloak which is actually the wrong way up you want to put it down on your bench so that the back of the cloak is facing you now because that's the back you want the small sides to be wrapped around on the back now it's it's recommended linen does hold a fold for quite a long time to press the fold down nice and firm you can iron it down if you want to make it really stuck but I just find it pressing the fold down holds so you're folding it in by that half an inch on that yellow line around the edge and you're folding in the side for the back which is the side for the, with the one inch border now before we attach this to the cloak on the corners you just want to nip off about a little triangle because that just means there's less fabric so it, it lies down flatter and then it will become apparent why you've done the sides different sizes in a minute after the next bit of sewing this is always the hardest bit lining it up but it can be done I'll probably speed this bit up but you want to make sure that your flat bit is lined up exactly with the flat bit on the slit of the cloak it's a lot easier to do this if your cloak fabric isn't stretchy whereas the herringbone fabric is slightly stretchy in one direction so it's quite hard to get it flat so I'll just pin this on that's pinned on so what you'll notice is I've only pinned the back I haven't pinned the front the front is just wrapped around so what I'm then going to do is I'm actually going to pull the front round to the back it's the back that's facing me remember and I'm going to leave it pinned so at this point when I sew around the edge of that I'll be using a matching coloured thread this time then I'll be attaching the back down but I won't be attaching the front down that is why the front is bigger because then when the front is wrapped round to the other side and the front will then come out further that means that I won't be seeing the threads that have sewn the back down on the front and it also means that I won't have to worry about matching them up if you make both sides border exactly the same then you have to make sure that you're sewing them both at once which means you've got pins on both sides and you don't know where each border ends and even the slightest error in your folding of the fabric will mess you up completely and it is possible but it's very annoying and I just find it's easier to make the border on one side thicker than the border on the other it solves most of the errors so I'll go away and sew that on now and then I'll come back to the camera and I'll show you what to do next now that's all properly sewn down so that's the inside of the border done the outside of the border is obviously just loose so what I'll do now is I'll turn it over and now I'll just pull around the front to the correct side like that just the same as we did before I'm going to cut off the corners of that just sort of halfway to where the line starts on each side and then I'm going to pre-fold the linen and then I'm going to pin it down now 
that can be a bit fiddly in places especially when you just start up at the top because it's usually quite difficult to make sure it's flat once you've already sewn one side down but providing you take your time you shouldn't have too much of a problem with it now what I will do is I'll just put a run of sewing around the edge of that so that's done there is the little bit of border which goes around the slit which is by far the hardest bit of border to do is sewn on on both sides the only thing left to mention is that because obviously the fabric isn't anchored around the edge it's only anchored on the outside then that can actually fold over and get roughed up which means that you end up with an uneven bit so if you're not planning on doing any decorations or embroideries which will fix that in place it might be worth just doing a sewing machine run around the inside as well as around the outside to prevent that from happening but because I'm planning to do some decorations I'm not going to bother to do that yet my camera is about to run out of batteries and I'm going to say that the cloak is pretty much completely finished apart from the border that just goes along a straight edge to the end. So if you've chosen to go as far as doing the border bit, if you've managed to do that you can definitely sew linen onto the end without my instruction. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how I'm going to go about that. So I've got two strips of linen that are kind of the right length, I think they're a bit, a bit longer and what I've done is I've marked on the turnover allowance which is half an inch and then the one inch for the inside border and then the two inches for the outside border and then the turnover allowance so that means that each strip is four inches wide and I'm going to pre-fold them all the way along and pre-fold them there just so that it has some memory of the points and then I'm going to fold over that end like that and then all I'm going to do then is just wrap it around. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to sew it straight on. So I'm going to sew that on there like that and I'm going to sew the back again first and then I'm going to sew the front. And so what I'll do is I'll just pin it up to that yellow So hopefully you've just seen the image run of having sewn the edges on this cloak and hopefully you understood what happened during that process so anybody who's following the border tutorial should be able to work out what I did. Sorry about that. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Let me know what you think and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. This would be a lot easier if there wasn't a tripod in the middle of my desk. I'll just carefully thread this out of the tripod without knocking it off the bench.